Hey everyone, we are here for another week of On The Verge. And today we are gonna get real practical. Are you ready for this? So if you are in your small groups right now or you're at home just watching this, I need you to get three things, okay? I need you to get something to write on, so a piece of paper or a notebook or something, something to write with, and a glass of water. But don't drink it yet, just make sure you have it with you. So something to write on, something to write with, and a glass of water. All right, go get that right now. So today we're talking all about being on the verge of giving in. So there are things that we are sometimes really tempted to give into, or we just simply give into it. And we're gonna lay out some of those examples. Cause my hope is to give some of those examples will give you some language as to what you might be experiencing on the inside. Cause there were times when I was a student where I had no idea what was going on and to have some language is helpful to recognize some of these things that we can be on the verge of giving into. But before we go into some of those things that we might give into and then some practical steps to maybe help us avoid giving into those things, I need to say this, those experiences that you have where you know that you are tempted to give into something and you're on the verge of giving into something, know that God's not surprised by it. You and I, we're all human. These moments happen, but it's what we do in those moments that really is critical. We can either choose to give in and lead us in a direction away from God, lead us in a direction that's hurtful to ourselves or in a direction that hurts other people, or we can choose to step away. And there are so many practical things that we can do to step away so that we don't give in. And that's what I really wanna to highlight today, is we're gonna talk about some of the things that we can give into and then practical steps we can do to get ourselves away. So the reason that I want you to have a piece of paper or something to write on, something to write with, is because sometimes it's helpful to write these things down. And we're gonna whiz through a lot today. We're not gonna go deep into anything. We're actually gonna go super high level, talk about a lot. So you might wanna divide your page into two, or you might wanna use a front and a back, and on one side talk about the things that we might give into, and on the other side talk about some of those practical tools. Just in case, you don't have to write all of the things down, but maybe there's one or two from each list that you know that you wanna remember so you can write them down. And one final thing I'll say before we dive in about the tips and the tricks and the practical steps that we're gonna go through is you're not necessarily gonna find these things word for word written up in the Bible. But some of things like science and psychology partner really well with what God does have to say in the Bible. And we can use that to help us live better and wiser lives. So first we're gonna talk about some of the things that we are prone to give into, and by no means is this list the entire list. I'm just scratching the surface, but I really just wanna give us some language and kind of get us thinking about what are some things we can be on the verge of giving into. Some of the things you'll be like, yeah, I knew that. And some of the things you might be surprised by. So we're gonna talk about nine things that we can potentially give into. So if you're one of those people who like lists, write one to nine on your page, and then we'll go through them relatively quickly, super high level. Each of these could be a sermon in and of itself, but I just wanna scratch the surface. Number one, clicking something online that you know that you shouldn't. Whether it be watching a movie or a TikTok video that you know isn't helpful, in February, we talked about the damage of watching pornography. All of these things are damaging to ourselves and damaging to others. And it's in, in the quiet of maybe in our rooms or when we're home by ourselves, that the temptation to give into those things is very, very real. And we need to be aware of those moments when we are tempted to give into clicking something and watching something we know we shouldn't. Number two, sending something or posting something you know that you shouldn't. It is really easy to be mean people behind a screen really easy because you don't have to see the person's face. And in a moment of frustration or in a moment where we have a really strong reaction to what someone else has done, we can be on the verge of giving in to sending that really mean text or posting that really mean thing about the person. And that's not okay. Number three, peer pressure. There are lots of things that our peers will try to get us to do, but some of those things are damaging to ourselves and it's damaging to others and will lead us in the wrong direction. Giving into peer pressure is often wrapped up in wanting to feel like we belong. We all wanna belong somewhere, but we have to decide that there are some people that we just should not belong to. Number four, power. Sometimes we just want to feel powerful and that can play out in gossiping about other people. It can play out in looking down about somebody else just because they look different, sound different, smell different, dress different than you. Anything that makes you feel more powerful than somebody else and pushes someone else down isn't kind. And we can be on the verge of giving into those moments to make us feel more powerful and we have to watch for that. Number five, insecurities. We all have things that we are insecure about. Even the most confident person in the room has something they're insecure about. 
and giving into insecurity often can lead us to talking negatively about ourselves and thinking that we have no worth. It can also lead us to falling into the trap of comparison when we compare ourselves to other people. And that is the thief of joy. If you've ever heard that quote, that comparison is the thief of joy. And feeling insecure as well can stop us from trying new things or stepping into new opportunities because we fear what people will think of us or fear that we'll fail. So we wanna be aware of those moments of giving in to those insecurities. Number six, anger, giving into anger. Being angry in and of itself is not bad, but sometimes when we get angry, it causes us to hurt other people in ways that we should be aware of. So we need to be aware of those things that make us angry and when we're feeling angry and how to respond well to that. Number seven, worry. We all have something that we're worried about, whether it be our grades, whether it be our future, whether it be if we're gonna fit into that group of people that we really wanna be friends with, but we don't wanna necessarily give in to that worry because it can stop us in our tracks and stop us from moving forward into all that God wants for us. Number eight, complaining. Guys, let me call this out. Complaining is not life-giving for anyone. Not life-giving for you, not life-giving for the people listening to you. Yes, there are times that we have to vent, but sometimes we just complain for the sake of complaining. And let me say, school would be way more enjoyable if we didn't complain about every single teacher that we had and every single piece of homework that we had to do. So let's be careful of being on the verge of giving into complaining about everything because everything would be a little bit more enjoyable if we could see some of the beauty in it. And number nine, laziness. Sometimes we can give in to laziness and saying, oh, I'm too lazy to do this. I'm just gonna watch more Netflix episodes. I'm not gonna work very hard on that piece of homework and we give into being lazy. And that is not honoring. God does not want us to be lazy. So we need to be careful about giving in and being on the verge of giving in to laziness. Okay, so those are just nine things that I want us to think about in terms of what we can be on the verge of giving into. And again, by no means is that list complete. But now I wanna move and spend more time onto the practical. What can we actually do when we catch ourselves being on the verge of giving in to those things? So I've given you some language and now I wanna give you some tips. Are you ready? Number one. Start off by saying, God, I need your help. Prayer is a powerful tool, guys, and it can be as simple as, God, I need your help. God, I'm on the verge of giving into this. I need your help. When we enter into these places where we're on the verge of giving in, it's a battle, and it can be so hard to get ourselves out of it. And a lot of the times when those temptations hit us and we're on the verge of giving into something, it wants to win. But we have the power of the Holy Spirit living in us when we follow Jesus and God wants to help us fight in those moments and get us through. So first step before anything, just simply say, God, I need your help. Number two, drink some water. Did you know that drinking four ounces of water can calm anxiety that you're feeling in that moment? It's not necessarily gonna take away the problem or the thing that you're anxious about, but it'll calm you down enough to help you think clear and give you a better frame of mind so that you can move forward with a bit more clarity. Okay, so this is the time you take your glass of water and um, we're gonna have a bit of a competition to see who can chug it first or fastest. You do it with us. Okay, ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Done. Not even there. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, go for a walk. I'll be honest, the other day I was definitely wearing socks and sandals going for a walk, so not necessarily running shoes, but Getting outside and moving, getting fresh air, going for a walk can clear your head in dramatic ways. So much research is out there about that. And I don't wanna hear the complaint of, I'm too lazy, I don't wanna go for a walk. Just stop it, get your shoes on, go for a walk, because the fresh air will actually clear your mind. And it's also kind of a metaphorical act of, I'm gonna walk away from the situation that's currently causing me a lot of stress or currently making me want to give in to something. I'm gonna go for a walk, walk away, clear my head and come back with a fresher perspective. And especially in the moments when you're home alone or out quiet in your bedroom and you're tempted to click on something and watch something that you know you shouldn't, put the device down, get your shoes on and go for a walk and walk away and clear your head. Number four, set a timer and set a timer for 20 minutes. So apparently it takes 20 minutes for a really strong emotion that we have to work through our bodies. So whether it be even happiness or sadness or frustration or anger, it takes about 20 minutes for your body to work through that emotion. So set a timer for 20 minutes and then get a glass of water or go for a walk or do any of the other practical things you're gonna talk about and calm yourself down in 20 minutes. That's it. We can all do 
that walking away, drinking water, whatever, for 20 minutes. And then at the end of that, you're gonna come back with a clear state and you're probably not gonna give in to what you're wanting to give in to. Number five, call a friend. I'm a huge advocate for doing this kind of thing in community. That's why your small groups are so important. So if you're on the verge of giving into something, this is the time to either call someone in your small group or someone in your circle and say, hey, I'm really worried right now and I just need to tell you about it. Or hey, I really wanna gossip about this person, but I know I shouldn't, can we talk about something else? And calling them and being honest. Or calling a friend and saying, I need you to tell me a funny story and just totally distract you. I did that the other day and it was so helpful. I highly recommend it. Number six, have a place where you've written down truths that you need to be reminded of. In these moments where we're on the verge of giving into something, we are most likely to forget everything we know to be true because we're in a battle where we're fighting to not give into something we know that we shouldn't give into. So having it written down on like sticky notes and posting it on your mirror, on a note in your phone, or having a journal full of different quotes or encouraging Bible verses that you can go back to and look at. This might even be something that you can do in your small group and together create a list of truths that you know to be true. And often the best ones come from the Bible because they're directly from God and have them written down. And then when you need to remind each other of those truths, you all have the same list. Might be a fun thing to do together. Number seven, say three things that you're thankful for. God talks a lot about in the Bible about saying thank you and being grateful. It changes our perspective when we remember the things that we have that are good. So just stop yourself in your tracks, say three things that you're thankful for, even ask a friend, say, hey, what are three things that you're thankful for? And refocus your perspective, and that's gonna help you move away from the thing that you're tempted to give into. Joshua Black. Yes. Can you please tell us three things that you're thankful for? I can tell you three things. So number one, my wife. You know what, I'll Aww. say my family. How about we include, I was gonna do my kids and my wife, but I'll do my family, okay, fair. Uh, my church, and uh, golf. I wasn't expecting that one. Yeah. I was expecting the other two, but not the other <laughs> third one. <laughs> Number eight, take a power nap. And for some of you, this is gonna be the only thing that you're gonna take away because I've given you permission to nap. But napping is a great reset. And when you sleep, it actually is a time for your body and your mind to heal. And so it stops you, it slows you down, gives your body time to relax and to heal. And then when you wake up, you can move forward with a fresh perspective. Now they do say you should probably only sleep for 20 minutes or for two hours, because if you wake up in between then, you're gonna be more grumpy and that's just not productive. So 20 minutes or two hours. Number nine, pet and animal. There's a reason that there are therapy animals out there because they're very helpful to refocus us. If you have an animal at home, go cuddle it. If you don't, maybe find a neighbor dog and see if you can take it for a walk. And if you're allergic to animals, maybe you should just disregard this one. Number 10, exercise. This one is kind of like walking, but it's more on the extreme side because it gets you moving hard and a little bit faster and gets you sweating. Here's a practical one, especially for those of you who find yourself getting angry a lot and wanting to act out in anger. I highly recommend boxing, highly recommend it or going for a really long run. There have been times where I've been very frustrated or very angry about something and rather than taking it out on someone, I get it out by either boxing the air, I've done that multiple times, or boxing a punching bag. Very, very helpful. Number 11, do a handstand. Did you know that doing a handstand activates a part in our brain called the pituitary gland, which does lots of things, but it also helps reset our mood. Since in the moments when we're on the verge of giving in, it's often uh, linked to our mood or our perspective about something. So do a handstand, get yourself upside down, get the blood flowing, activate the pituitary gland, and just reset your entire mind. It can also bring comic relief because I don't know about you, but I don't handstand very well. So it's just really funny. Are we, are we ready? God, okay. I haven't done a handstand in like four years. What's the competition? What are we, are, is it the longest handstand or the best handstand? Uh, I don't know. I'll make it up as I go. Or the best fall. You die for the sake of the kingdom. <laughs> okay. Three! <laughs> okay. Two, one, go. <laughs> I lost all strength in my arms. <laughs> Did I win? Yeah, you won. Oh my goodness, Matt. Oh. No, that's the winner. You're doing it against the wall. You just can't see it. Oh, they're so winded. How is that possible? What? You just walked on your hands. How is that possible?
Number 12, put on some bop and worship music and just dance it out. Dancing can really bring up our mood and help us just have some fun, but also it's important to put on worship music instead of other music because the lyrics help redirect our thoughts and bring us back to looking to God to help us in these moments. And that is very, very important. And there's some great worship music out there, guys. You cannot run away from this. We are going to move and groove together as a family. And let's get ready for dance number one. All right, so for dance number one, we're gonna do something real simple. I like to call it the shopping cart, okay? Maybe you haven't been out to the grocery store in a long time, you know, you call Amazon, uh, you call the grocery store, they deliver it to you, or you just do curbside pickup. But today we're gonna get into the supermarket and we're gonna do the shopping cart dance. So first of all, you gotta take your hands, put them out in front of you, just like this, like you are pushing the cart, okay? So you wanna move your feet up and down, Get your knees going. And then as you feel the groove of the music, you want to reach to the shelf, grab something, put it in your cart. Maybe it's up high, put it in your cart. Okay? Maybe it's down low, ooh, double-handed, put it in your cart. Okay? So it's real simple. Hands out in front, move your legs, grab, put in your cart. Grab, put in your cart. Ready? Let's do this. DJ, drop that beat. Write it down. There are some things that we are tempted and on the verge of giving into you that we don't want to tell other people and that's okay, but get it out. Write it down in a journal or on a piece of paper, burn it if you have to, or put it through a shredder if you're worried someone's going to see it later, but write it down and get it out and say, God, I am on the verge of giving into laziness right now. God, I'm on the verge of giving into uh, talking poorly about this person. God, I'm on the verge of hurting someone by sending this text and I just need to write it out. And then that's it. Just get it out and don't hold it in. And last but not least, number 14 involves this emotion wheel. This is posted on the side of my fridge and some of you might think this is weird, but it's actually a very helpful tool because a lot of these things and the, verge, the things that we're on the verge of giving into, like fear and worry and anxiety, they're very, very sneaky. But as soon as we can name it, we can tame it and we can help ourselves through that process. But sometimes we need a little bit of help. And so these emotion wheels help us identify what we're feeling and then we can say it out loud and to name it is to tame it and then we can move forward with greater wisdom and clarity. Okay, so I gave you guys a lot today a lot of different things that we can be on the verge of giving into and a lot of practical tips and by no means do I want you to remember all of them. But maybe there's one or two from each of those lists that resonated with you that you do need to write down. And then when you are on the verge of giving into that thing, go back to that practical list that you've written down and do one of those things. It's very, very helpful. But remember to one, always start by saying, God, I need your help. God, I'm on the verge of giving into this. God, help me refocus back to you can be as simple as that, doesn't have to be a lot of words, but refocus back to God because he's the one who wants to help you fight through this thing. And then number two, try out one of these practical tools. See what it does because it helps you live wiser and healthier lives. If you look at the book of Proverbs, which is kind of in the middle of the Bible, it talks all about living with wisdom. And to live with wisdom helps us move away from those moments that we are on the verge of giving into that can cause harm to ourselves or cause harm to others. And it also draws us closer to God. Check out the book of Proverbs if you really want. There's lots of wisdom in there. But all these practical tips are just to help us live wiser lives, draw closer to God, and have greater clarity. But again, always start with prayer and then do the practical steps. All right, let's pray together. God, there are so many things that we can be on the verge of giving into and things that you know that it's, it's not the moment that we think about giving into these things that's wrong. It's what we do in those moments that you really want to help us through. You know where each of these students are at and the things that they are on the verge of giving into now or will this week or have given into this week, God. Um, and we just pray that you uh, draw near to them and that through the power of the Holy Spirit living in them that they will be able to fight against some of these things 
Um, and God, if there's one or two practical steps, these tools that you have allowed us to have to live healthier and wiser lives, may they remember them and use them and see that it uh, is, is for their benefit and draws them closer to you. So we thank you for how much you love us. Amen.